The U.S. presidential race reaches its second crucial stage on Tuesday in New Hampshire. Iowa produced some surprises last week, but if the opinion polls are right, there should be two clear winners in New Hampshire. Donald Trump for the Republicans, Bernie Sanders for the Democrats. Senator Sanders' home state, Vermont, is just next door, and Donald Trump has led every poll in New Hampshire for the past seven months. The main interest for Republicans is in the performance of the men currently behind Trump who are all vying to be the mainstream Republican candidate, particularly Marco Rubio, who seemed a rising star but did himself some damage in this weekend's TV debate. In New York right now is David Paul Kuhn, analyst and author of the political novel What Makes It Worthy. David, good to talk to you. Uh, despite the apparent firmness of the polls, New Hampshire is slightly tricky, isn't it, because of independent voters. They can vote, as I understand it, in either party's primary. That's right. If you're an undeclared voter, you can go to either party's primary tomorrow and declare yourself as a, to intend to vote in one of those two contests. And you can vote for anyone from Donald Trump to Bernie Sanders to Hillary Clinton. So what do you think is most likely to happen, particularly in this kind of melee? Sorry, let me interrupt you. Particularly this melee behind Donald Trump, what's likely to happen there? Yeah, we don't know, and that's the honest answer. It is a big pileup of establishment candidates, of governors, et cetera, and senators. And the question is, will any, any of those cars pull out ahead? Will John Kasich, the governor of Ohio, will Marco Rubio survive and come out ahead as the establishment favorite despite his uh, pretty poor performance in the beginning of the recent Republican debate? But all, all eyes will certainly be on that number two spot. That said, if Donald Trump doesn't pull in the high 20s and break 30, if he doesn't perform well tomorrow night and win, that bubble will pop. And once, of course, Hillary Clinton would have been expected to do well here, once she did do well here, I guess the conventional wisdom is that after this, she should. But all this is Bernie That's Sanders' home territory. Yeah, so we should step back for a second. Despite this being Bernie Sanders' home territory, it is spectacular and completely surprising that tomorrow he could break 50 percent, that he could beat Hillary Clinton by nearly double digits. That said, you're right, it's one of the more liberal Democratic electorates, and very soon they have to go down to South Carolina, and that's Hillary Clinton's firewall, where very likely the majority of voters will be African American and she has very strong numbers with them. And if Bernie Sanders is going to prove a true contender and truly able to defeat her, he's going to have to show that he can peel away large swaths of the African-American Democratic vote. Uh, just a thought, David, this other billionaire wild card, Mr. Bloomberg, who's suggesting he's still thinking about throwing his hat in. What do you reckon? Well, he'll be more interested if uh, the polls are right tomorrow. In other words, if Bernie Sanders wins and Donald Trump wins and they maintain that trajectory, uh, it's certainly more likely that uh, Bloomberg jumps into this race. He's very interested in running, uh, particularly if Donald Trump were to actually pull off the Republican nomination. And Bernie Sanders, which is a longer shot, pulled off the Democratic nomination. If that were to happen, Michael Bloomberg would get in. And uh, you could have two billionaires in this race, two of the richest people to ever run for the presidency since George Washington, and a Democratic socialist. This is looking much more like a European election right now than an American one. David Paul Kuhn, thank you very much indeed.